Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and good morning from Jeonju, South Korea. You come to Jeonju for two reasons, the beautiful Hanok village and the food. Jeonju is a UNESCO city of gastronomy, so you know the food's going to be good. The famous bibimbap originates here in Jeonju. I literally just woke up. I am still in bed right now, so let me go outside and have some breakfast and I'll tell you a little bit more about Jeonju. Last night we slept in a hanok, which is a traditional Korean home built all wood, traditional style. The floors are heated, so it's nice and toasty warm, but you also sleep on the floor, which I have to say is a little bit uncomfortable, but I think I slept all right, and we have a simple uh, breakfast here, but this is a really interesting uh, dish for breakfast. This is like a sesame, black sesame paste kind of soup. I love this. Had it in Vietnam, had it in Hong Kong, but I've never had it in Korea, so let's try it. Mm. Oh, it's less sweet here. Oh, it's just like pure sesame. A nutty goodness. Also a little sandwich here. It looks like maybe some, I'm not sure, some jam inside. I'm just gonna go for a dip. Staying in a Hanok is the reason a lot of people actually come to Jeonju. This one that we say it is called Sam Lakon. It's right in the center of Jeonju's famous Hanok village. That was a really tasty breakfast, especially that uh, sesame soup. And the details in the woodworking of these Hanoks is just incredible. They also have like the paper walls and all the details just make for such a peaceful stay. And like I was saying, the floors in the Hanoks are heated, which is really nice, but also the mattresses are heated. I've never seen that before. So you're super toasty warm, despite it actually being quite Quite cold here in Jeonju, but it does take a little bit getting used to sleeping on the floor. So first things first, let's go eat Jeonju's most famous dish, bibimbap. So this is Hankook Jip. This is one of the most famous places to eat bibimbap in Jeonju. And the reason is, is because this is the first restaurant that started to serve Jeonju style bibimbap since 1952. Uh, many famous people have eaten here, past presidents, uh, the founder of Samsung, and it's on the Michelin Guide as well. And we ordered up the famous uh, Jeonju style bibimbap, but I'll tell you a little bit about the history. It kind of started a long time ago with people just sort of taking the leftovers and then mixing them all into their rice. So as you know in Korea there's a lot of different side dishes. So all of those leftovers just mixed in with the rice. That was the origins of the bibimbap but now today it's become more of a luxury, a very refined dish. And I've ordered up uh, their specialty. There's only three different types. You can get it in a hot stone, you can get it with cooked beef, or you can get it with raw beef which I've got right here. There are so many different ingredients I can't name them all. I think there's something like 30 different ingredients, but basically it's all on a bed of rice that was uh, cooked with a beef broth. And you can see I've got the raw beef, they call it yokoi here. So raw marinated beef, there's uh, ginkgo nuts there, there's mung bean jelly, all kinds of different things. And the key sauce is this Korean gochujang sauce, the fiery hot red sauce. And this bowl is hot but they also have like the earthenware pot which is even hotter than this one and you have to bibimbap it up you gotta mix it all up mix 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 this is the dish to try in Jeonju you cannot come to Jeonju without eating bibimbap one of the best Korean dishes in the world but this is the place to try it so many different things in there it smells so good and then we've even got even more side dishes here 
as well. Like there isn't already enough ingredients inside of this. I've never tried it with the raw beef before, so this is gonna be my first try. Okay, you gotta get this really mixed in because you want that gochujang to get all over top of the rice. And I can see lots of bean spirits in there, some shiitake mushrooms, there's greens, there's pickles, there's all sorts of different things. But this is the raw beef version. Let's give it a try. The flavor is actually light. It's just the gochujang. A little bit spicy, a little bit sweet, but you get so many different textures in there from all the different veggies and the meat. Because it's raw, it's just so tender, but it's marinated. So you can taste a little bit of soy in there as well. Oh my gosh, yum. It's so healthy. It just tastes so healthy. And then you keep chewing, you get kind of like different textures, different flavors, a little bit sour. I think I just chewed on a pickle. It's just an explosion of flavor, but at the same time, it's really a light flavor. It's not overpowering. You can taste the natural flavors of all those different ingredients. There's so much going on in there. Yum. It's a super hearty dish, but also very healthy. So Mink has the uh, cooked beef version. Exact same thing, I think. All the ingredients are the same, but just with the cooked beef. I'm gonna mix that around. There's seaweed in there as well, nori. This mung bean jelly is really good too. I wasn't totally sure if I was gonna like the raw beef, but honestly, it's so tender. It just feels like, when it's mixed in with all the ingredients, it just feels like a really tender piece of beef. And every single bite is like a surprise. It's like a mystery. You get all these different ingredients in it. And then if it wasn't enough ingredients inside the beef and pup, you also got these tons of banchan here. I'm just a kimchi lover. I love all the banchan, but I gotta give it up for the kimchi every time. Sour, spicy, crunchy, yum. Like I was saying, there's three different types that they serve here, three different types of beef and bop. There's the raw beef, the cooked beef, like minka, and then the dual sot beef and bop, which is the cooked beef in the stone or earthenware pot. That one's really good too, because you get the crispy rice on the side. It starts to kind of cook to the side of the pot. But this is the famous John Chu style that you have to try when you're here. I usually go for the other kind though, if I'm being honest. That was some amazing, amazing bibimbap. You just feel so great after eating that because it's just so healthy, all the different ingredients in there. One other thing that Jeonju is famous for besides, as I was saying, the Hanok village and its food is wearing a hanbok, so a traditional Korean dress. So luckily for me, I have a volunteer who's going to dress up in what? You ready to get in a hanbok? <laughs> I'm very kind of excited and nervous at the same time. Do it. So this shop has hundreds of different uh, colors of hanbox and different styles and Mink has chosen one that she likes. You can do men and women. I'm not going to do it today though, just Mink and this is something uh, uh, people love to do when they visit Jeonju. It's one of the most popular things to do for sure. Ta-da! Wow. How do I look? I picked the pink because it's my favorite color. Let's go do a photo shoot. Let's go. <laughs> So we've come to this shrine, which is the perfect place for a photo shoot. This entire uh, Hanok village is just like set up for taking photos in the Hanbok, which Mink is in right now. It makes you feel like you're stepping back in time. Look how beautiful she is. So beautiful. <laughs> Do you like it? I really, really like it. It's so pretty. Yeah. It's the pink and the blue flowers. It's like you're in a Korean drama set in the 1600s. 
All right, finished off at the shrine. I think we got some really good photos and I'll include them in the video so you can see and let's go get changed out of this and head to the market. I don't think this is appropriate for the market. <laughs> This is the Nambu market here in Jeonju. It's a morning market and a night market on the weekends, but we have come in the afternoon, which means it is quite uh, dead in here. There's not a whole lot going on, but there is a restaurant in here, so we're going to pop into the restaurant and try it some more traditional Jeonju cuisine. So we popped into this restaurant right inside of the Nambu market, and they're famous for their uh, red bean porridge with uh, rice balls and this is one portion, just look at the size of this. It's absolutely massive. Look at that rich, rich red bean. And this is kind of like a dessert, sort of like a breakfast maybe dessert, but even with desserts here in Korea, you're gonna get served the side dishes. So we've got kimchi, different banchan. I'm just gonna take some of this and put it in my bowl here, try to get some of those rice balls. and. You can also add sugar and salt as you wish. I think I'm just gonna try it first by itself. This is such a massive portion. I'm glad we only ordered one because this is too big for two people. Okay, I'm gonna go generous with the sugar because that really doesn't have any flavor whatsoever. Brown sugar, give it a little mix. Let me try one of these rice balls. They're just uh, rice balls. They're not dumplings, they're not filled with anything. With the sugar, that's really nice. Really chewy balls. And that red bean is just so ridiculous and creamy and thick. It was really satisfying. Warming, just steaming hot. Look at the steam coming off of it. It's so rich, creamy red bean. Man, that is a massive portion. Be careful if you come here. Only order one if you're with two people. If you're by yourself, you're gonna be eating a ton of this red bean soup. The dumplings are a little bit salty, or rice balls, I guess I should call them. But then with the sugar, it's a nice kind of salty, sweet mix. Mm. Yeah. And this place is just packed it with the elderly folk. I think this is what the older generation likes to eat. I don't think I've ever eaten so much red bean in my life. But a nice little snack, I think probably not on tourists radar typically when they're visiting Jeonju. There are a lot of famous foods. This one's maybe less famous, but still uh, particularly popular here in Jeonju. Give it a try. If you like red bean, you'll love this. It's a little bit weird for us to eat our dessert first, but we are still hungry, so we're gonna head and get some real lunch. popular dumpling store. It's takeaway only and they actually make you microwave the dumplings before if you want them hot, which is a little bit strange, but this is a famous dumpling uh, found here in Jeonju because of this triangle shape, which makes it unique. And you can see there's shrimp tail sticking at the end here. So this is like a shrimp and veggie dumpling. And let's put a little bit of sauce on here, a little bit of soy sauce. So we've just taken it away back to our hanok. Give it a try. Mm, it's huge. There's actually kimchi inside as well, of course. Nice plump dumpling with really fresh shrimp. Actually better than I was expecting, seeing that they asked us to microwave it, which was a little bit off-putting, but it's actually a really flavorful dumpling. Look at all that kimchi filling. There's a lot of filling portions here. John, you are crazy. Mm. It's almost like a patty inside of the dumpling. Wow, not bad. So far, Jeonju is a really pretty little town with lots of awesome places to take pictures. It is a UNESCO city of gastronomy and it's known for its food. But other than the bibimbap, nothing has been super impressive so far today. The bibimbap was incredible. I'm sure you can get great bibimbap in Seoul though. Um, other than that, everything's just been kind of all right, but 
we'll see. We've still got more to eat. A few moments later. So it's about 8 p.m. right now, and for dinner tonight, we've walked about 30 minutes from the Hanok village to try to get away from some of the touristier restaurants and hopefully find something more local tonight. We're having bulgogi. So we've sat down at this restaurant, it's called G, I don't even remember what it's called to be honest, but I'll put the information for it down in the description box and I already knew as soon as stepping in here that we found a local gym and it's completely packed in here on Friday night. We got the only table available and there's absolutely no tourists in here whatsoever and they are grilling up bulgogi like madmen in here. So they've got pork bulgogi marinating in a red, probably gochujang sauce and then moving it from a slow, low grill to high grill at the end with like the fire charring it. And they pretty much specialize in just two things, the bulgogi and then the kimbap. So this is kimbap right here. This is a, looks like a little sushi roll, but it's not called sushi, it's called kimbap. There's no fish in it, it's just egg, uh, carrot and I believe radish and then wrapped up with some rice and then with some seaweed on the outside and then this is the bulgogi pork bulgogi and that just looks so so good so thin cuts of pork looks like maybe pork belly I can see some fatty bits on there and it is to be wrapped up and enjoyed in a lettuce wrap as with anything barbecued here in Korea so when you see the lettuce on the side it's for wrapping it up so let me just make my own wrap here so grab a nice piece of bulgogi sliver of garlic a little bit of gochujang and let's just try it like that <laughs> Maybe you come to Jeonju for the bibimbap, but probably you should come to Jeonju for the bulgogi. That is amazing. It's so smoky. It just melts in your mouth too. And then with the garlic and the gochujang, the wrap, it just goes so well. Let me just try the piece by itself. Oh, that is perfectly grilled. You can just feel the smoke. And it, it's bulgogi, so it's, it's, it's a little bit sweet. It's definitely a little bit sweet, but this red sauce that they've got on it is a bit spicy at the same time. Just try it by itself. Oh man. Oh my god, that is amazing. That fat just melts in your mouth. And it's definitely gonna kick. Ooh wee! That is awesome, Bulgogi. Alright, let's chase that with one of these kimbops here. Just a nice little side dish to have some rice. Mm. It's got texture, nice crunch on the inside, but then the rice on the outside. Oh my god, this bulgogi is just to die for though. Honestly, it's amazing the wrap, but you can just eat it by itself too. And it's a party in here. People are drinking and eating bulgogi like crazy. This is the true Jeonju Korean food experience that I was looking for. I'm gonna kind of mix and match here. Grab a kimbap, grab a piece of bulgogi, and then maybe even just dip it a little bit in this uh, kimchi sauce here. Mm. Oh God. I can say without a doubt this is the best thing I've eaten in Korea on this trip. Hands down, incredible. You know, a lot of times when you have a barbecue in Korea, you're doing it yourself at your table. And however good you might convince yourself that you are, I guarantee you these guys are better at grilling meat than you are. Just let the masters do their work, it tastes better that way. This combo of the kimbap with the bulgogi is so good. This is already our second plate. This is such a stellar restaurant, oh my god. I have to say too, this is true for anywhere, not just Korea. Wherever you are in the world, when you leave the big city, like you leave Seoul, or you leave Tokyo, or you leave Paris, the people are always friendlier in the smaller town that we've found here in Jeonju, people are very friendly. Yeah. I was almost a little bit disappointed with Jeonju food until I came here. What a meal to end our trip here in Jeonju. That was not only the best thing we've eaten in Jeonju, but the best thing we ate in South Korea, for sure, for sure. That was so good. Those thin slices of bulgogi with the kimbap is just perfect and such a local atmosphere in there with the grill, the fire going. 
no tourists whatsoever. It's just a 30 minute walk from the Hanok village. I'll put the information, like I said, down in the description box for all the places we visited today. And if you haven't already, subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye.